Well, good evening and welcome to 10 Minutes of Motivation. This is a little bit of your fuel in the middle of the week to get you through the rest of it. I don't know what you've been facing, uh, but you've been in our prayers and our thoughts. And tonight, we just want to give you a little, a little, uh, little fuel to get through the rest of the week. Of course, I've got my Life Group shirt on. That's just a reminder that this Sunday is Life Group sign up. So I hope that you're thinking about what Life Group you want to join. If you weren't here this Sunday when we showcased them, our Life Group wall has them uh, uh, all listed. So when you come on Sunday morning, you can check those out really quick. We'll also give you a little bit of background on what those groups are again. And after service, it's going to be sign ups. And sometimes our groups get filled up on the first Sunday. So you want to make sure that you're here and signing up for a life group. But right now you're here for 10 minutes of motivation. You need a little kick maybe for your middle of the week. If you've got a Bible, turn over to 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, I mean chapter 11. And we're just gonna read verse one. I'm gonna fill you in a little bit on what goes on after that. But Paul gets to this point in the book where he's been really intense. He's been talking to the Corinthians about a lot of different subjects. There's a lot going on in the church of Corinth. If you were ever in one of our Corinthian studies on Wednesday nights in the past, you remember Wednesday nights when we actually met together? We had Corinthian study. We're talking about how this, this church is a little bit of a mess. And so Paul's having to deal with a lot of things. And he comes to this point here in 2 Corinthians 11, and he says this in verse 1. He says, I hope you will put up with a little of my foolishness, but you are already doing that. So I simply titled this tonight, Be a Little Foolish. Because we all kind of have a little foolishness in us. Maybe we put it this way. We're all a little quirky. We've all got little quirks about our, our personalities and our characters. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for people who can look at my life and see my quirks and love me in spite of those things. And it's possible to love somebody in spite of their foolishness or their quirks. You can even appreciate them for it. You know, if you've got somebody in your life that you're really close to and that you love, you might, you might look at these quirks in their life and, and you actually love them for those things. They just, it's part of them. And, you, and rather than allow it to annoy you, and you just kind of appreciate them because of those things. And you know, quirks aren't faults. Sometimes we look at other people who are different than us and we see their quirks. They're not faults. They're just quirks. You know, we're all a little bit quirky. We've all got a little bit something about us. And even foolishness, foolishness is not necessarily a lack of sense. That's not how Paul is describing himself here. You know, when uh, Alyssa, our oldest daughter, went to college for the first time a couple years ago, this year she's going to be a junior, and you wonder sometimes where the time has gone. The first time that she went, we had several talks with her, just as parents, because, you know, she's a, a young adult, our child still, but she's a young adult. She's going off on her own in some ways for the very first time going to college. She still comes back home, and so she's not completely independent, but she's getting there. And as a parent, you're just concerned as they're stepping out that they're going to they're gonna do the things that need to be done and make the right decision. So, you know, we had conversations about, hey, remember to put God first. Remember to love him with all your heart. Remember to make good choices. Be careful who you wind up making friends with. You know, give it time and, and, and test people out. You know, don't just be too super assuming and, and accepting and, and not too guarded at the same time. But, you know, choose your, your friends wisely. And man, you're gonna have a lot of fun at college. We'd always tell her about all of our stories at college and the things that we had done, all the fun that we had. But reminder, remember why you're there. You're there to get an education. This is not all about fun, but you wanna have fun. But remember to put your ed education first. And I remember after a couple of times, she was like, you know, I know all this. And sometimes she would look at us and be like, do you guys even know me? Like, why are we having this conversation? And sometimes she was like, I know, I know these things because it's how you raise me. So maybe the third time, it, it seemed like we were just being a little bit foolish because in her mind, she could be like, you know, mom and dad should, should they should trust my judgment. And they should have confidence in how they raise me because this was, this was not a new conversation that we had. This is not new instruction. This is something that we had raised her with all of her life. And so she's like, you guys have been telling me this for years. You know, why are you having to tell me again? I've already gotten it. But you know, it made us feel better. You know, when you've got, you know, whenever your child is making a first step, parents, you realize this, it just makes you feel better to make sure that there's certain things they understand about the step that you know about the step because you've been there and you've been around the block a little bit. And in some ways, 
your actions, our actions at the time, could almost look like, you know, mom and dad are being a little bit foolish about this whole thing because I get it, because I know. You know, there's people in your life that check on your spiritual health continually. It, it, it might sound like nagging. It might bother you because you're like, why are they nagging me constantly about the same issue all the time? Maybe it, it feels like it's overkill. You might, you might take it as, why don't they trust me? Why don't they have more confidence in me? But what it comes down to is that they're really concerned about your life. And I mean, is that a bad thing? Is that a bad thing that people are concerned about you? And this is what Paul is pausing here in this moment to say in the letter to the believers in Corinth. I hope you guys will put up with my foolishness a little bit because much of what I've said, I'm saying again because I want to be sure. He's telling them I want to be sure that you're getting this because it's important. This is of prime importance because what I'm telling you, what I've instructed you in is the matter between spiritual life and spiritual death. Paul's like, I hope you guys are getting this. I want to make sure that you're getting it. So put up with a little bit of my foolishness. If you're looking at me and saying, I, my, oh my goodness, he's, this is our second letter. We're in chapter 11 and those are just there so that we can follow. This is just one long letter. And they're like, man, we're so far through. He said so much that he's already said to us before, man, Paul's just like, can you guys put up with a little bit of my foolishness because I, I, I love you. See, he's, he's describing after these verses, this, what he's doing is not foolish. It might appear as foolishness, but he's got a reason. So he's telling them, it might appear this way, but guys, there's a couple of things going on. I, I promised you to Christ. Paul's taken it very seriously what Christ has called him to do. After that, uh, an instance on the road to Damascus and then when Ananias comes and Paul knows what God wants him to do, what Jesus is calling him to do, he's taken this seriously. He's an apostle to the Gentiles and he has a heart for them. And not only does he have a heart for them, but he has a heart for the things that Christ has commanded him to do. And so Paul is like, you guys have to understand, you might be looking at it and think I'm nagging you or I don't trust you or I don't believe in you or Paul's just plain foolish for feeling this way. No, there's a reason why I feel this way. I, I'm indebted to the Lord. He's put this upon my heart to do this. And I'm indebted to his work because this is what he wants done. He desires for all to be saved. And so there are people who have a heart for you because God has placed you on their heart and they have a special love for your life. And realize there's, there's people that I've seen come through things and conquer things. And there's times that I'm going to come back and, and check on them. And they might, you know, I might check back and be like, you know, you, you made a commitment to be sober. How are you doing with that? You know, you made a commitment that you felt like you need to get alcohol out of your life completely because it was causing problems. How are you doing with that? You're having marital problems at such and such a time. You know, how, how are you guys doing? How are you really doing? And have a, a clear conversation, not because I don't trust them. Not because I don't hope for the best, not because I don't think they could have handled it on their own, but because I have a special love for them. Can you realize that there are people in your life that God has placed specifically that have a special love for you in a way that maybe they don't care for everybody else around them, but you, God has keyed their heart in on you to make sure that you're doing well and you're fighting the fight and you're running the race. Man, it's not nagging. It's not even foolishness. It's not overkill. It's God's placed them on your heart. He also says another thing. He is afraid for them. He doesn't want them to be deceived like Eve was in the garden. Paul is aware as an apostle and a servant of God, and he's coming to instances where he has battled spiritual forces, and even in the physical realm itself, as he's cast out demons from people and dealt with individuals with spiritual issues. He knows there's a spiritual fight going on, just like they're still going on today. And he's like, I know the enemy that you face, and he's cunning. He's sharp, and I don't want you to be deceived like Eve. I want you to realize that there are people in your life who care deeply about you. They love you so much that they want to see you in an eternity. I mean, as a parent from Angela and myself, don't miss for a minute that we are at times probably in our beings afraid for our kids, that we, we want to make sure that they know the truth that we know, that they love the Lord like we love the Lord. Because I want to make sure that my kids are an attorney so that when I'm an attorney, I get to enjoy it with them. Don't, don't miss for a minute as parents. That's a concern for us. I know it's a concern for me. 
And it's a concern for probably a lot of you. You probably have people that you're concerned about. I want to be in eternity with that person. There's people who feel that way with you. So put up with a little bit of their foolishness because they love you so much. You know, Paul's also saying here, I'm aware of your tendencies. I'm aware that if somebody comes to town and he speaks with authority, that you guys just all of a sudden jump on the bandwagon and you believe him. And so Paul's concerned, you know, you guys are, you're too trusting. You guys are almost gullible at some point. You, you don't put to test the words that people speak out of their mouths. And so he knows their tendencies. So put up with my foolishness to check on you again, because I know what you tend to do. And he's like, listen, if somebody comes and they preach another Jesus than we preach to you, or if you receive another spirit than the spirit that we brought to you, or if they have a different gospel than the gospel that we brought to you, guys, you put up with this stuff and I'm concerned for you. So put up with my foolishness because I know your tendencies. And he pulls off of this and says, sometimes, you know, for even us in our lives, sometimes we might not realize our own weaknesses. And that's what he's pulling out for the, the believers in Corinth. You guys don't realize a weakness that you have. And I'm trying to guard you from that. You're looking at it as nagging and overkill and I'm not trusting you. It's not a matter of that. I know your tendencies. And there's people in your life who know you're, you're prone to certain weaknesses, that they know that maybe you're swayed from the truth too easily, that you're too believing and trusting in, in other people. You trust uh, somebody else's word too easily. You don't even test it against God's word. They just seem like they're somebody of authority and they say it and you just jump on the bandwagon and believe it. And so they're coming back and making sure that you're believing the right stuff. Maybe you listen to too many voices. You've got too many voices speaking into your, into your your life and some of those aren't even necessarily good voices and they want to make sure that you're listening to the one voice from God from Jesus Christ that you're praying and you're seeking God and you're listening to the right voice you might think that they're foolish they're actually wise because you need accountability and they know that so I've said all this to say this one thing for us don't just assume that other believers are okay it's easy for us just to feel like we need to deal with our problems and our issues and everybody else is doing the same and they're doing it effectively and well. Don't assume that. If God places somebody on your heart, if you wake up tomorrow morning and, and a thought comes, an impression to your heart comes and you're like, hey, I wonder about so-and-so. Don't just dismiss that. Just don't be like, well, you know, I hope they're doing okay and everything's all right. Why don't you take time and actually pray for them? Why don't you reach out and actually engage them, encourage them, strengthen them, strengthen them, build them up, uh, correct them in love if you have to correct, if it was that kind of thing, if you have that kind of relationship that you can correct them. But don't just let that impression, because God many times places impressions on our hearts and we should do something with it rather than, well, I hope, no, pray, encourage, engage their lives. So I'm encouraging you tonight, motivating you tonight. Make sure that you're checking in on others as God places it on your heart. If you come to church on a Sunday morning and you look across and you just sense in your spirit that so-and-so, this person is hurting, maybe take some time after and you don't even have to address it. You can just be like, you know, I just want to pray with you and just let God lead you. We need to be a people that are just led by God and not be concerned about things that look foolish. Sometimes we don't step out because we feel like, well, people are going to think, I'm being a fool or I'm being foolish or I'm being, you know, I'm just, I'm just a little bit too, it's just a little bit too much caring. Don't feel that way. If God's placing things on your heart, listen to what God is saying. God wants to use you and give you a ministry in the life of others. And so I pray that you just be able to be obedient to that. Maybe even right now you can think of somebody God's been impressing on your heart. Maybe this is a confirmation, this message, man, God's been talking to me about so-and-so I need to check on, on them. Then do that. Can I pray with you? Father, we thank you for our lives. God, we thank you for those that are in our lives that we put up with a little bit of their foolishness, that they love us so much and they want to make sure that we're on the straight and narrow, that we're going where we say that we're going, that they are sometimes looking like a nag, but it's not nagging, it's caring. They really love us and they just want to be sure. And God, we pray today that we would find a special appreciation for them. But Lord, we also ask, help us. Help us, Father, not to be afraid of looking foolish, but let other people put up with our foolishness sometimes. We want to make sure that they're okay. No, God placed you on my heart. I want to pray with you. I want to touch base with you. Lord, help us to step out and show one another that we love each other, and you're going to use us as, as your hands and your feet to touch people's lives. We can pray for people to be comforted by God, but Lord, many times you want to use us to comfort them. 
And so, Father, help us to do that. And we pray it in your name. Amen. So that's it. I don't know if we're at 10 minutes or we're probably over 10 minutes. 10 minutes of motivation for your week. I pray that you've just been encouraged, motivated. You're set to live the next couple of days. We can't wait to see you on Sunday at 1030 in the morning here on our campus. We're so much encouraging you to come in and be a part of what God is doing in church. Uh, if you're not feeling well, catch us online on Facebook or YouTube. But you are continually in our prayers. And I pray that you touch somebody's life in a special way this week. God bless you.